So I gave you a sneak peek of what I'm talking about this morning when I was talking to the kids. It's all about traveling today. And my wife and I, we love to travel. One of her favorite words is go. And so we like to go, and we love to go in a car. Uh, sometimes when we go on vacation, we'll, or if we're traveling somewhere, we will know that we're going to leave on Tuesday. We're going to be back on the following Tuesday. We're going to stay at this La Quinta or at that Marriott, and we're going to do this on Monday and this on Wednesday and that on Friday. We're going to be very regimented. But most of the time when we go on vacation, we know we're going to leave on Tuesday, and we know we're going to be back probably on Tuesday, but it might be Wednesday or Thursday. Uh, we know that we're going to head a specific direction. Hey, you know, California looks nice this time of year, or I think this time we're headed to Virginia. Um, but there's no, it's more spontaneous. There's no hard and fast rules. Um, everything is negotiable with, with our vacations. Um, there's a few things we try very hard not to eat at places that we have here, so we get a little bit of difference, different food on the road. Um, but those, those vacations, we call them tumbleweed vacations. Uh, we took one a couple of years ago. We ended up in Washington State. It's just everything, everything worked that way. Um, and every day is a new adventure for us. That's what we really enjoy. In our scripture this morning, we heard about Abraham and, how, and about his adventure of faith, his long-term tumbleweed journey, if you will. Um, God was sending him to a land that he, he was going to get as an inheritance, along with his uh, son Isaac and his grandson Jacob. But they didn't really know where they were going. Uh, it actually said they, he went out without knowing where he was going. Scripture continues to say that Abraham was looking forward to a, a city that has foundations, whose architect and builder is God. See, I think I'd like to see that too. He was looking forward to get, getting into heaven. Way back in the first book of, of the Bible in Genesis, God had spoken to Abraham and had promised him three things. He had promised him a personal relationship. He had promised him numerous heirs. And he had promised him land. Now, he and his wife were very old. They were well past their childbearing years. Um, but they had faith. They had the faith that God was going to help them and God was going to provide. And God did provide. You see, our Lord fulfilled the promises and Abraham's faith was fulfilled. Now think about the, those early stories of Abraham. He was called Abram back then. And when he was back then, there was no Bible. There was no, they just had the stories. And so he didn't have all of this record of miracles to, to lean on. He just had the calling of God. God had called him and told him he was going to do this for him. And he had to believe him. And you and I, we should be thankful that he did believe him. You see... God, uh, Abraham is called the father of the people. We are all descendants of Abraham. Even the Jewish tradition acknowledges that Abraham was the first to worship the one God, the one true God. Now, Abraham and Sarah, they weren't perfect. In fact, they were, <laughs> they, they were not very nice to each other frequently. They had doubts about all these things that God had promised them. But they never doubted the presence of God in their life. They always knew that God had his hand on their path, just like he has his hand on your path, and he has his hand on my path. Now, have you ever had doubts about whether God was involved in your life? If you haven't, that would be really odd, because I think everybody has had some doubts at one point in their life. Um, maybe you're wondering if you're just wandering aimlessly or... Perhaps you're wandering with a purpose. Doubts are okay. Because doubts lead to questions. And questions lead to seeking. And seeking leads to finding. And finding is the proof. Finding is the culmination 
It's the proof of what we're looking for, what we're hoping for. You see, in that opening verse of, ele of Hebrews 11, the writer told us, he gave us a great definition of faith. He says, faith is the reality of what we hope for and the proof of what we don't see. Now, that's from my common English Bible. Maybe you're more familiar with the, uh, the version that says, now faith is assurance of things hoped for, a conviction of things not seen. Or perhaps you're a little old school and you want to go all the way back to the King James Version. It says, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. You see, we can't see heaven. But that's what we're all hoping for. It's where we hope to go when we pass from this earth. So it's all about faith, right? Or is it? When we talk about faith, we might say that someone has the faith to move mountains. Or they might have the faith of Job. But Jesus told us, he says, we just need the faith of, a, of the size of a mustard seed. When we have faith, when we have hope, even just that little bit, we can allow ourselves to, to open up, open our mind and to see God's work in our life. Open our mind and our eyes and see God's work in other people's lives. When we're wandering through this, work, through this life, we need to watch. We need to watch for that evidence of God. So you remember when the angel came to Mary, told her that she was going to have a son, and she's like, no, I'm, I'm a, I can't. I've never been with a man. The angel says, nope, you are going to bear the Messiah. And she had to have massive amounts of faith because God's angel was talking to her. And she had to have faith that indeed this was God's angel and that this babe that she gave birth to, that she raised, was going to be the Messiah. And she had to have faith that fateful day when she sees him on the cross, that this is not the end, that this is the beginning. See, her faith and her service to God brought her fruits to her actions. And we remember the story of the three young men that, were, that King Nebuchadnezzar throws into the fiery furnace. You remember that one? I talked about it a few months ago. And not only did their faith save them, it got them a one-on-one -on -one conversation with our Lord in the midst of it. Can you imagine that conversation? Their faith gave them something tangible, something to see, something to hear, something to feel. When those Hebrew slaves were led out of Egypt, do you think it was just a happenstance when they get to the shore of the sea that the sea dries up? Or was it the faith that Moses had brought that allowed God to provide them an exit? Now these stories in our Bible, they have something in common. One main thing in common is that faith is not just some invisible force that Christians say they believe in. Faith is tangible. Faith is visible. Faith is audible. When you have faith that is fulfilled by God's promise, your faith turns into conviction. Now, where can your faith take you? On the back of your bulletin, I found this great acronym on the internet. It says, faith is fantastic adventures in trusting Him. Because God will take you places. He's going to take you. He's going to keep you safe. And our faith in God, our trust in God, is going to take us on some wonderful adventures. On one of our adventures that Karen and I shared a couple of years ago, we, we were on one of these tumbleweed vacations, and we found ourselves at the Painted Desert Petrified Forest National Park. And as we go in, it was very easy to see God's handiwork. 
the desert landscape looked like God had just taken this beautiful watercolor and just brushed the sides of these dunes with reds and oranges and grays and greens. And the desert scenery, oh, it's just beautiful. But as we looked closer, this was not a dry and barren land. There were little insects and little lizards and small animals that were scurrying around looking for food, warming themselves. It was amazing to see in this landscape that would support little else that there was life. It was teeming with life. And as we round the next bend, the landscape changes. And instead of these beautiful sand dunes, now the landscape is just littered with the remains of these giant trees. These giant trees that had once stood mighty hundreds of feet tall in a lush forest that God had changed the ecology and brought in the seas and the seas pushed them over and they're buried in the mud. For millions of years these trees are buried in the mud where each cell of the wood fiber is replaced with a crystallizing mineral so that the trees themselves become rocks. And God had changed this landscape over time from lush forest to ocean back to sandy desert. And each different ecology was teeming with life. The lizards and the insects, well, they don't know that God has put them there and given them life and purpose. You and I do. And it's our faith in God that separates us from those lizards and those simple desert creatures. I remember a story that I heard as a young man, as a young child, um, about a desert traveler. This traveler was going out across the desert and he was out of water, and he was weak. He could barely walk, he could barely stand. And as he's walking across, he sees what he thinks is a mirage up ahead. It's just a simple hut. And he makes his way to this hut. He thinks, if I can get to that hut, I can rest, I can cool off. And he gets closer, and it's not a mirage. There really is a hut there. And as he approaches, he sees it. There's a water pump in the yard of the hut. And he musters all of his strength that he can, and he goes to, the, goes to the water pump, and he starts pumping the pump, and it just makes this clanging sound. The pump's dry. And he notices on the side of the pump there's a cup, and in the cup there's a piece of paper. And he pulls the paper out and he looks. It's a note. And the note says, this old pump works. I put in a new sucker washer. But the leather dries out, and you have to prime the pump. The note goes on and says, there's a bottle of water sealed up behind the, in the big rock behind you. Pour the water in. Pump like crazy. Don't drink the water first, though. You have to prime the pump. It says, enjoy all the water you want, but fill that bottle back and hide it away for the next guy. Signed, Desert Pete. Well, he turns around and he finds, sure enough, there's a big rock behind him. Under that big rock, there's a, water, there's a bottle full of water. And he pulls the cork out of the bottle and he looks and he is so tempted to drink that water. If he drinks that water, he knows he can make it another day. But it might be three days to the next water. But if he primes the pump and, he, and the pump works, he's going to be good to go. He'll survive. 
Well, the story ends that he, he makes his decision. He chooses to prime the pump. And he pours the water down the pump. His last hope, he pours it down the pump. And he starts pumping like crazy and it's making this clanging noise. He's just about to give up. And then he hears it. The gurgle, the slosh. And then all of a sudden the pump is pumping water forth. And he can drink and he can wash and he can cool off in the water. He's going to be safe. He can fill his canteen back up. He can put the water back in that bottle for the next guy and hide it back under the rock. See, he had faith, and his faith brought him an abundance out of a time of desperation. Isn't that amazing? It's a great story. I don't know if it's true. I don't know if it's just song lyrics from forever ago. But it's a great story because that's what we have to do. We have to surrender to God in our times of desperation in order for Him to provide us and we for us to receive that abundance that is everlasting life. So have those doubts. Ask those questions. Use those questions to seek out the interaction of God in your life. Look for it. It's there. And while you're wandering on this adventure that we call life, notice that God's with you, claiming you as His own, fulfilling His promises, giving you the proof of things hoped for. See, our faith tells us that the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob gives us a promised land to look forward to. That house has many rooms. Our faith that shows us a God that watches over us to keep us safe. And our faith gives us purpose in our adventures. Pray with me this morning. Precious Lord, we, we thank you so much for the adventures you have taken us on for the adventures yet to come, and for that everlasting life abundant in your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This is our time of giving in thanksgiving for all that Christ has given for us. Amen.